CM Punk makes his first appearance since AEW All Out. Plus, WWE calling up a popular NXT star and backstage AEW plans for Soraya's in-ring return. It's all in the wrestling news right now. Look in my eyes, what do you see? CM Punk on CFFC. Here he is, he's back. <laughs> he is. Here he is. He is. There he's, he is. Uh, CM Punk back on TV last night. He was on commentary alongside the brilliant John Morgan. Uh, and he opened by saying, I've missed you. I've missed everybody watching at home. I miss the fights, but tonight I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> What's he like? Oh, what a funny boy he is. Um, it, two, two things I know you're thinking this morning. One, yes, they are lovely jumpers thank you and two does this mean that cm punk is done in aew if he's now uh, in you know doing future endeavors doing mma stuff yeah for sure yeah I, I i think everybody expected him to be done it doesn't look like he's he's coming back and it's looked that way for for many many weeks um to me this is interesting um because he's dipping his toes in the MMA world again. I wouldn't expect to see him fight again, um, but he's he's doing, he, he's staying on screen. I think a lot of people were suspecting that maybe we won't see CM Punk in any sort of form of real broadcast media for some time. I think he was a little bit maybe put off, um, but he's, he's popped up sooner rather than later. And I guess it's somewhere that he, he's familiar with, with people that he knows and mm -hmm. people that he trusts, like a, a comfy shoe after what has been a, a very weird few months. He certainly looked healthy. He he's looking looked good. Happy. He's looking good. And you know what? I the CM Punk on commentary, like he did the odd WWE bit, didn't he? And he was great value. Oddly enough, I like earlier this week, I was just watching like a compilation of CM Punk's best commentary moments mm -hmm. in WWE. And he wasn't Can doing I wear it for long. Blazer? So good. He was <laughs> he's so, so funny. Um, so seeing him in commentary, uh, in, in the, on the commentary booth rather than it, it, it fighting <laughs> it's probably a good thing <laughs> he drowned in triple h's blazer didn't he he did he really did big boy uh speaking of triple h he's a big fan of one cameron grimes down on nxt uh, melter of wrestling observer radio reporting that grimes is on his way up to the main roster it makes sense because he's just had that match with joe gacy yep. on tuesday and joe gacy won so that kind of draws a line under what they were doing and it probably leaves him free to move up. I think he's done everything he can. That's in it, NXT. isn't it? Don't get me wrong. He's, he's not won the NXT title. No. He's, he's not held the big one down there. But given the lay of the land in NXT, I don't think anybody sees that happening. I don't no. think it, he's, he's going to be the one to take that title. Um, so, yeah, I think he's done as much as he possibly can do in NXT. I think he's been great value, a consistently entertaining character who is an absolute joy to watch. I feel like he's like the Sami Zayn of NXT, isn't oh. he? He's just some, oh, nice. somebody who, when they're on screen, you can't take your eyes off. He's just really, really enjoyable. And I hope they do him proud. I think they will. I think with Triple H running the ship. I yeah, think, yeah, I think there's something there because I know that there was. I, I seem to remember reports where Vince didn't get the Cameron Grimes thing for a while. Shocker! I know. But it's like, <laughs> well, he's a millionaire, but he acts like he's not a millionaire. Like I think he wanted him to come out in like suits, like Ted DiBiase. Yeah. But when he was just like he's a southern and he's a millionaire, no, you have to be one or the other. They're two very different flavors. Uh, he was a million dollar champion for a little while, lest we forget. Cameron he certainly Grimes. was. He certainly enjoyed was. that run with Ted DiBiase. Yeah, that it was, was good great. fun. I, to be honest, ever since he's gone to NXT, I've just enjoyed everything he's done. There's, there's mm. nothing that I haven't enjoyed. I, I really, really like him. Um, and his, his work in Impact was always really good. But he's, he's really sort of raised the bar, hasn't he? He's got, I'm, I'm very, very excited for him. And I think he'll be a, a worthy addition to, to the show. To Raw, to SmackDown, or to the moon, whichever comes first. Uh, Soraya back in the ring next week uh, for Full Gear. She was on the sessions with Renee Paquette talking about the day she got cleared and the caveat that comes with her being cleared. When I came in, I didn't really know what the deal was, she said. I just knew that I was going to be part of something and we were going to build something special here. But then when I got there, got the great reaction when I walked out and I was like, oh my God. And you can't put a pro wrestler out there and tell them they can't do anything else. Uh, she described October the 31st, the day she officially got cleared and the conversations that she had with the medical experts. Uh, the doctor told her that the fusions in her neck looked perfect and said there were no fractures or any other issues. The doctor went on to say she could start with one match a month and then gradually 
gradually start building up. So maybe expect to see her more often than we suspected. I, I think I thought, oh man, she's probably just going to do big pay per view matches. They'll, they'll mm. keep her really, really safe. But maybe we'll see a bit more of her. Um, and she said the first person I texted as well was Mercedes, uh, the car manufacturer. <laughs> Obviously, oh, no. <laughs> stop it, Sasha Banks. Uh, she was one of the first people I texted. All that stuff that can mentally flip someone up to end someone's career. So it's nice to see that obviously they're still on good terms and everything. To me, this is a bit concerning because it sounds like Tony booked her or signed her even, not knowing if she could wrestle. Like she's- It, it, it does it, sound it, that way. Do you believe it? what she said? And is she, she demands a hefty price tag, obviously, and that's totally fair. Um, but is she that valuable without being able to wrestle? I would probably argue no. And she's going to be on seven figures, isn't she? Mm. So has he brought her in not knowing if she can go again? That's think, concerning. Yeah, he's a bit of an impulse buy guy, I feel like Tony Khan comes in. Like, <laughs> he is. All that too. Uh, but yeah, so there was uh, whether or not she would have been brought in as like a, uh, as a, a it's, in a speaking role, she'd be, she'd be great. But as you say, to ask that sort of money, you would want the return match of Soraya, wouldn't you? That's where the value is, isn't it? That is, the, that's where, that is where the value is. And they got it. So yeah. the gamble worked out. I think there'll be, I think we mentioned this yesterday, I think there'll be some nervous people watching that match because mm. obviously it's been five, almost five years since uh, her career, presumed, previously thought career ending injury. So there'll be some nervous people watching that match. She's in there with Dr. Britt Baker, who's excellent. So I couldn't think of anybody I'd feel more comfortable with her being in there Safe with. Safe as houses. It's, it's, it's yeah. the perfect opponent. Yeah, they're going to have some good fun. Uh, we'll end on a chat with uh, an AEW star. So yesterday, I got to have a chat uh, with Anthony Ogogo. Now, he's part of Progress Wrestling's They Think It's All Over at the end of this month, Sunday the 27th. He's teaming with former Wickham striker Adebayo Akafenwa. First football, first non-football outing for Akafenwa. He's teaming with a go-go for Progress Wrestling. Mm -hmm. uh, so we talked about that, but obviously the conversation turns to his place in AEW. He did that banger of a feud with Cody. Yep. And then did <laughs> nothing. Yeah. So I asked him about it. Here's me asking him about it. I had to come away last year after I had the feud with Cody. Um, I had to leave because I had some visa stuff going on. I had some uh, long, long, long story short. Uh, my passport got nicked. And um, in typical American fashion, it's really, really difficult and hard to get a visa. My passport got nicked. Therefore, my visa got, my visa was obviously in my passport. I had to report that stolen. I had to get a new visa. Only way to get a new visa, I had to leave America. Once you leave America, you can't come back into America without the visa. So I couldn't get an appointment. I Honestly, mate, I talked about gray hairs earlier. I gave myself so many gray hairs. They'd kind of written me off TV for nine months because I wasn't supposed to be there for nine months. Which is again, nobody knew that I was going to be nine months until I got back to England because you can't apply for an you can't apply for an appointment until you're back in the country. It's a whole thing, a whole mm. really rubbish like red tape thing. And then I was, I guess, so they'd written me out for nine months. And when I came back, everything had changed. We'd signed Brian Danielson, the best wrestler probably who's ever lived. We'd signed Punk and this person, that person, and then the whole landscape changed. Then Cody left. So like me coming back and doing something with him, that was that was gone because he's now he's not there anymore. So everything just changed. And I think with me, I think I'm such a unique talent that it's hard to know what to do with me, I think. Because it's just it's just difficult. I'm, uh, yeah, and then uh, again, like, it's it's not me. I don't know. So all I've done is work as hard as possible to get as good as possible. So when I when the, I do let when I do get subbed on, I score a hat trick. You can hear the whole thing uh, on the Cultaholic podcast feed. And if you're a patron, you can watch more of that video as well. Lovely to chat with a go go. I asked him, uh, I, I sort of sprung on him asking about like the Jonathan Gresham thing that happened a few months ago. Oh, Remember yeah. when him and Gresh got into it on Twitter and it all got a bit. Uh, mm. Thought I'd ask him about it. Loads of scoops. Cheeky. Have a listen. Huge scopes on there. Huge scopes. And more wrestling news throughout the day at cultaholic.com. Anything we need to shout about? No! <laughs> you shouted no, that. No, no, we got, uh, we got some stuff coming up this weekend. Big weekend of stuff. YouTube.com slash. What a tease. What a tease. What a pro. Oh, you dirty tease. Stay safe and love you. Bye.